Hello viewers, 4DIYers here with another video for everyone. In this video here, I'll be showing you how to remove the intake on a BMW M57 diesel. This particular car I'm working with here today is a 2010 335D. However, a similar procedure will apply to other vehicles with the same engine of the same generation. Before we get started, it's a good idea to disconnect the battery. This requires a 10 millimeter socket. Now remove the six eight millimeter screws holding down the cabin filter cover. Lift off the cabin filter cover. Unclip the sensor for the hood. Pull out the side tabs and remove the outer cover by the hood shocks. Here's a close up of removing the other cover. Remove the two 8mm screws on each side of the windshield cowl. This will be one on each side. If you haven't already, unclip that wire that goes across the engine bay under the plastic trim piece above the engine cover. Lift up the plastic cover and then pull it towards the front of the car. There will be one wire clip that needs to be removed in order to fully remove this cover. Before going any further, it's always a good idea to vacuum up any debris which can potentially fall inside the engine. Using an E14 socket, remove the two bolts on each side of the strut tower so the strut braces. Remove the plastic cover at the center of the windshield cowl, then loosen the E18 bolt here. There's no need to remove it fully as these strut braces have slotted holes where they slide in under the head of this bolt. Then remove these strut braces from each side. Make note of their orientation as they only fit in one position. Remove the 13mm nut for the power wire that goes across the engine bay. As mentioned earlier, you should have disconnected the battery so there's no chance of a short here. Remove the 75mm socket head bolts using a 3H drive ratchet. This engine cover comes off in two pieces and I'll show you how that's done. Once those fasteners are out, wipe around the oil fill location, then remove the cap. Lift out the first part of the engine cover. Reinstall that oil fill cap. Remove the three 10mm bolts holding on the center section plastic trim panel on the firewall. There are two styles of fasteners here, make sure you note their locations. If you haven't already, pull out that rubber gasket. Then lift out the cover. You may need to pull up on that windshield cowl to help with the movement. Remove the back section of engine cover. This is a tight fit and will require some patience when removing. Make sure you don't damage the sound insulation underneath it. Remove the two 10 millimeter bolts towards the back corner of the intake on the driver's side. There will be one for the engine oil dipstick bracket and another for another bracket on the rear. Disconnect the electrical plug for the MAP sensor. Simply press in the tang and then pull off. Disconnect the electrical connector on the rear behind the intake. Then disconnect the final one below the MAP sensor. Using side cutters, remove the cable tie holding down the wiring harness. Using a standard screwdriver, gently pry off the electrical connector for the butterfly flap motor. Disconnect the wiring from that bracket. Disconnect the electrical connector on top of the assembly along with removing the harness from the wire retaining clip. Use a standard screwdriver to remove the gear clamp holding down the EGR pipe. Disconnect the electrical connector for the EGR valve. Remove the 10 millimeter bolts using a 3H drive ratchet for the top intake runners. These bolts cannot be fully removed as they snap into place inside the intake. Now remove the 11 millimeter nuts for the lower intake runners. You will need a magnet to retrieve each of the nuts, careful not to lose any. Disconnect the boost pipe going to the throttle plate and EGR assembly. Wiggle the intake back and forth to help break it free. Finally, it can be removed. I tried to clean as much carbon buildup as possible while the intake was removed. This engine wasn't as bad, I expected worse, but there's still enough requiring a cleaning. Each of the intake runners had paper towel stuffed in the holes to prevent anything from falling inside the engine. 
When removing the intake, it's always a good idea to replace all the gaskets. The parts in this video were supplied by Turner Motorsport. Links to these gaskets will be included in the video description. With every sale from the links, I do get a bit of cut back to help keep my channel going. The old intake gaskets are removed with a standard screwdriver. This intake was soaked in my own homemade hot bath setup to remove any carbon buildup. This is a common issue on these engines. Those grooves are cleaned for the intake gaskets and then new gaskets are installed. Paper towel was removed from each of the intake runners. The sealing surface for the intake gaskets are also cleaned on the engine side. Scotch Brite can be used on the head. For the valve cover, I just used a light degreaser and a rag. The intake is then reinstalled back onto the engine. The fasteners are threaded in by hand first to ensure it's properly seated. It's always a good idea to use a flashlight to make sure all the gaskets are properly in place. The 10 millimeter intake bolt torque specifications are seven foot pounds or 10 newton meters. The 11 millimeter intake nuts between the runners are torqued to 11 foot pounds or 15 newton meters. After that is reconnecting all the electrical connectors at the rear of the intake. Reinstall that EGR pipe along with the gear clamp, then tighten. Reinstall the electrical plug for the butterfly flap. Reinstall the other electrical connector and clip the wire back into place. Finally snap in the boost pipe at the front of the engine assembly. Reconnect the wire going across the engine using a 13mm socket. Follow up by installing the plastic protective cover. Plug in the wire for the MAP sensor. Before finalizing everything, I reconnected the battery and started the engine to ensure everything is working correctly. The brackets for the dipstick and at the rear of the intake are installed. The electrical connectors here are also plugged back in too. The rear section of engine cover can be put back into place. The first two bolts for the engine cover are threaded in first. That cover under the cowl is then installed with the three 10mm fasteners. Remember there are two different thread types here. The rubber gasket by the windshield cowl is pushed back into place. The final section of engine cover is installed. Make sure it does clip back into place on the rear section, then install those fasteners. The large plastic windshield cowl is then installed. Make sure you do pull through those rubber tabs at the back side sections, one on each side. Snap the power wire that goes across the engine bay back into place. Install both fasteners for each side of the engine cover. Reinstall the cabin filter cover assembly along with the fasteners. Reinstall the strut braces. Slide them in under the bolt by the windshield, then fasten them into place at the strut tower. Which brace goes on top doesn't matter. Reinstall the plastic cap for the bolt by the windshield. Finally, snap those plastic side covers back into place. New videos released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It's a huge help to me. Leave a comment below if you found the story helpful. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to also hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.